The fatal chain of events at Kyanga Mine at Maurer four years later was chillingly similar. A fire by spontaneous combustion, the decision taken to seal off the section. Miner Bill Allison had noticed a haze in the mine and alerted his manager. They went in to check it out. What went through my mind is, geez, you know, we haven't got the bloody Drago. I don't want to go any further. But uh, the manager was sort of a bit concerned and wanted to find out what was happening. So he went through the, into the return. And uh, so I thought I'd better follow him. So I went and I let him go in front just in case he went over. <laughs> <laughs> well, I reckon they were more dispensable than I was. <laughs> they got men in and uh, we started to seal it. You, could, you couldn't see the fires, like it's all, all the pillars being taken out so it all fell down. And um, you just couldn't see the fire, all you could see was the smoke. All they could do was keep a check on the gas and try to seal it off as quick as possible. We had to get a machine out the road too. They wanted, didn't want it to be sealed in there, so a lot of that delayed the actual sealing process, unfortunately. Uh, and then by the time they got blocks down there to bricks, like brick blocks to seal it, and that all took time. Delays cost lives, and no question about that. And also, we didn't have an appreciation, certainly I didn't, and none of the other blokes, or the, I don't think the mine manager either, had an appreciation of just how dangerous it was. Methane levels in the closed section rose and eventually exploded, killing 13 men still working on the seals. No, at this time we, we don't know what caused the explosion or where it originated. Uh, we won't know this until, possibly until we uh, are able to enter the mine where the men were working. I was just having a beer out in the shade on the grass near the house. I looked over and I could see this big black smoke. I thought, oh geez, you know, it like, looked like tyres or something were burned. Now, not thinking there was a mine, because the mine was like 20 kilometres away, you know, like by road. And, you know, I never thought for one second it was a mine. And then uh, a few minutes later, Johnny Walsh, who was out there on the shift with me, screamed into the driveway in his car and he said, the bloody mine's gone, the mine's gone. It's, uh, it's a terrible experience. It's, uh, it never leaves you. Like, I can remember that day as if it was yesterday, you know. Just, um, no, it, was, it stuck in my mind a long time, I couldn't even talk about it. Um, you know, a very good mate of mine, uh, Eric Fletcher was a deputy, and he was the last bloke I'd see his face. Um, I spoke to him as I left. And another fella who was going down the mine, I spoke to him, he was in the open cut, and uh, he didn't know anything about underground mines. And I said, uh, oh, Stay with, just stay with the, you know, the older blokes and they'll look after you. And uh, he said, is it going to be all right down there, Bill? I said, yeah, you'll be all right, just stay with them guys, they'll look after you, you know. And you know, it's stuck in my mind that, you know, like I've sort of, you know what I mean? Because um, I thought, I knew it was hazardous, but I, mean, I never thought it was going to blow up. For two sisters whose father was among the Kyanga dead, loss, pain and memories are always with them. But a scrapbook borrowed from the Union is only now answering some of their questions. We saw our auntie and uncle coming out just in normal day clothes, not dressed up. Mm. And we knew exactly what they were there for. And it was just so hard to watch them walk towards you. As a nine-year-old you yeah. knew? Yeah. I was really close to my dad. Mine officials coming and as they're jumping out the car they were full of fear and upset and saying that you know a car would melt in three seconds under there there's no way men are alive. Um, 
when they put the pipe down, you know, stuff would be said about the gases and things like that. But then the grown-ups would go inside and talk and we'd be left with outside, like with that one thing ringing in our ears as kids. Mm. With mum taking it so hard, there was Stephanie and my brother was seven in the middle. And I had to help with everything, meals, just the running of the household because mum was just distraught. Um, and it, it never actually lessened much as the years went on. That mm -hmm. it was so hard for her to just exist, like just breathe sometimes. But yeah, I, I lost a lot. Did you lose your childhood? Yeah, of course. But I'd do it again. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> she was lost. I was. Like Mama said that I was devastated for 12 months because I didn't understand. And so Steph and I went in just recently and spoke to a, a lovely man in there who actually explained so many things that we wouldn't have understood when we were younger. But he, he explained mining, he explained um, the inquiry. Um, you give us the facts. Yeah. Like, you've heard all these things from family and friends and well, kids all overhearing over the years. things that they yeah. shouldn't overhear and not getting the full story. We've lost our dad, 12 other families lost their husbands and fathers. Like, did any good come out of losing those men? You know, um, why was he down there in the first place when there was a fire? Like, we, it seems silly. Why go underground when you know there's a fire? But that was all explained to us, like what they were doing, why they were there, why it was important. You know, he was doing what needed to be done to try and put the fire out to keep his job yeah. for all the miners to keep their jobs.